Sorry for the long intro. We're uh, attempting to get this plane to cooperate here. I did just install it, so I had to activate it. Um, in addition to activating it, once I did activate it, it looks like it wants me to... Uh, well, it was acting kind of funny, so I'm going to have to restart the client, which that's not unusual. Happens pretty frequently. Most aircraft will do that to you. So we have the client restarting right now. That was a pretty hard fade. Hard fade. So client's restarting right now, then we're gonna get into it. Today's stream's gonna be a little different than normal. Um, I'm just bringing you along with me as I go into the Felis 747-200 for the first time. Um, and just show you how I work my way through figuring these things out. So. Should be uh, 
kind of uh, interesting way to do it today. Hold on a second. I'm just trying to get some music going here. There was... I could have sworn there was something more chilled than this channel, too. Maybe? Maybe not. Hmm. It has disappeared, so I guess we'll just go with that channel then. Thought there was something else that I had. Oh well, we'll use that. It's kind of some chill EDM in the background. Alright, so here we go. The client's coming up now. Um there we go. I swear it's coming up right now. It's just because it's loading. You're not seeing it. Just give it a second. Do 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 do. Well, that make that's some fish islands right there. Look how long that makes my arm look. It looks cartoony. Sorry, easily entertained. All right. Looks like everything is good. It's not running already. Awesome. I'm in the game now. Come on. So here you go. Here's your Felis 747-200. Look at that big, beautiful beast. And... Oh. Yes, please import this. Um, we're doing the Pan Am livery, because why not? I'm going old school. Might as well full send it, right? Um... So special shout out and thank you, Ghost XP Aviator. Uh, he is the reason why we have this today. Um, I'm very grateful for him uh, sending this over to us. Uh, won it in a uh, drawing on his channel. Um, and he did it completely out of his own pocket. So thank you very much, sir. Um, it looks like I should have parked it there, technically. Let's actually move it there because it's outside of its safety area. And I want to see if both of the jet bridges will hook up because that would be friggin sweet so yep we're gonna have to go through the throttle settings and everything yeah see it won't move to x1 i didn't think i had done it at x1 that's what i wanted c18 not x1 or x2 so confirm start new flight go it'll load up Sounded intense. <laughs> All right, we only get one of them, but still, that's cool. Um, perhaps I can tell the other one to connect further back. I always forget which one I'm looking for with the Sam main window. Ooh, fancy. Um, I don't care about all this. I just want this. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I should actually dink around with Sam. This looks like it might be uh, a little more thorough. <laughs> they added a game. Do, 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 do something to get to, to give you something to do in route. That's funny. I appreciate that. And I'm parking. Interesting. Well, cool. The update of that looks very good. All right. Let's get to it, shall we? So uh, hopping inside. Here's that first view. Let's see what quick views it has set up. So we got captain, lower pedestal, FO. So we got lower and then we kind of skip up to mid we don't really get to see down a little more i'm gonna assume upper cool and then we got <laughs> good lord the engineering pa panel this is the part that i'm gonna be like because i'm not used to this at all that's a whole lot to deal with um over the wing already set up 
on that side. What about number eight? Okay, that's overhead, right? Middle, low. Engineering, lower on the engineering. Okay, cool. What about four? F, or uh, iPad. I already like it. They already have camera views set up for everything. Love it. That's awesome. Because normally that's half the thing of getting a new plan. You're like, oh, I gotta set up new camera views. Um, let's get rid of my face so we can actually uh, follow through here a bit better. And uh, I need more chill music than this. This is not chill enough. I could have sworn I had a playlist that was just super chill. I want to say it was called like Stream Beats. Did I get rid of it? Or did it just disappear on its own? Hold on, let's let's see if we can find it real quick. Because it'd be more fitting. Yep, there it is. Okay. It's all good, I found it. Um Can I not throw it in as a playlist? No, it's just a search function. Let's save to your library. Okay. But where? Don't know where. Oh well. So it's just gonna be kind of creeping in the background a bit there. Anyway, all right. So starting up with the seven four seven eight hundred. Um. First thing I do when I look at any new aircraft is you just got to get a general feel for where everything is, right? So hold on, let's see. Do we have that enabled? We don't right now. Uh oh, well, what happens if I enable it? Is it going to let me do all the same quick views? Because that is going to become important when I want to use my uh, track IR here, which we're not going to do right now. Yeah, let's see. X camera already messing with shit. That didn't take long for X camera to screw all that stuff up. <laughs> okay, let's just chill here for a minute. All right, so I kind of divide the plane up and I find where all the systems are that are important, right? So you got your typical panel light and map light over here. Um, some more panel lighting. Radio versus INS. I'm not sure what that's for. I'm going to guess. Yeah, I don't know what that's for. Probably say telling it what I'm navigating off of, I would assume. Navigation source. So off the INS, if you're just using internal the inertial re reference system um, or if you're using radio nav. Uh, looks like we got a VHF nav on this side. Got a VHF nav on the other side. Same thing. Radio INS. OK, cool. That makes sense. That's exactly what that is, too. That's a nav source. Um, what else we got? We got auto throttle speed, which I don't know if that actually maintains speed or not. We'll have to dink around with that to figure that out. Flight director pitch. So I think autopilot disengage. This has control wheel steering, which is awesome, which means I can press and hold a button on the back of my yoke that I have set, which actually if I turn my camera on, you might be able to see there's a button back here. And that's exactly where the button would be on the yoke on this plane. Um, so basically what I do is press and hold that button. You put the nose where you want it and let go. And then it's going to follow whatever you have it set to, whether that be IS, Mach, or vertical speed. Um, so yeah. So we got the auto throttles. We got flight director pitch. I love that I can just do the pitch because this plane, from what I've seen from other uh, streamers so far, this aircraft is all about pitch, power, and performance. So you set a certain pitch setting, you set a certain power setting, and you expect a certain performance out of the plane. It's going to be interesting memorizing those settings, but we'll get there eventually. Um, Looks like dual setup for, or, or number one versus number two. So dual would just slave them both to the same course. I'm going to assume off of number one. Or you can have it number one, number two for flipping back and forth. That's very nice. It's just like that BAE-146 that we love. So that'd be super nice. Uh, we have following the INS heading. 
heading mode itself, or INS would be um, what we would normally call like lateral nav. So um, that'd be lateral nav. Got heading mode, got VOR localizer following ILS, and I'm not sure what that is. I'd have I'll have to go look in the manual for what the heck a land is. Um, got a turbulence mode for vertical modes. I'm gonna assume that just I'm gonna guess that that just allows it to kind of float up and down a little bit. Um, maybe give itself a couple hundred feet or three hundred feet or so of wiggle room, so that way it's not fighting it and making it feel worse to the passengers. It would allow itself to kind of float around just a little more than normal, so it reacts slower to turbulence changing where you are. CRJ actually has a similar mode. There's a button on it called Turbo, well, Turb, just like that. It's more towards the left side of the panel. It's kind of hard to visualize if you don't have a panel in front of you. But same idea, it just reacts, it makes it so the autopilot servos react slower to the changes. That way, if it's turbulent, it's not just jerking you around all over the place. Got altitude hold versus altitude select. So you're gonna, let's say I've selected I love that it was preset to 50,000 feet. Is that a subtle brag? So let's say I have it pre-selected to 41,000. That's where I need it to stop. You're going to flip that switch down, which for some reason it's not letting me do right now, which is interesting. You'll flip that switch down. If you want it to stop and hold the altitude currently at, you just switch it over hold. So preset as you're climbing up to something or descending down to something, you'd be in the select mode. It would capture it. It'd be chilling there. Then what you'd want to do is flip it over to hold mode. Because then it'll just hold that altitude. That way you can preset your next altitude before you even need to start descending, let's say if you're doing an approach or whatever. So that's cool. Um, Inhibit below glide slope. Ah, so if it's yelling at you because you're below the glide slope, eh, shut that up. Yeah, nothing bad's ever happened from people pressing that button and ignoring what the plane is telling them. But hey, maybe there's a obnoxious glide slope somewhere. That's very possible. Oh, that's a nice show hide yoke switch right there. Um, while I'm hiding it, we got VHF nav, INS selector, compass selector, attitude selector, flight director, compens or comparator. So a comparator basically means it's checking the difference between the two flight directors. If there was a big difference, it'd flag it. Cool, cool. Um, reserve hydraulic system number two. Okay, INS updating. So that would just tell you if the INS is updating. Over here we have similar selectors. Got a hydraulic brake pressure accumulator information right there. We have a standby attitude indicator there. And what the heck is that? Okay, so that's our flight control information. All right. True airspeed information, so it it uh, automatically adjusts and calculates our true airspeed for us there. That's nice. Total air temperature. EPRL. I'm not sure what EPRL stands for. E so EPR is injured pressure ratio. I'm not sure what the L is for. So this plane, you read out your power that setting via in engine pressure ratio. You do have N1 as well but you'd use typically EPR to actually determine um, how much uh, power you're producing. Um, there's your throttle mode. So right now you can see it's in top of descent mode, which I think is down here. Yeah, so TOD. Oh no, that's gonna be takeoff. Not sure what the D part stands for. I'll have to read up on that. And then this will probably be uh, MCT, max continuous thrust. Maybe takeoff departure thrust is what that's for, or takeoff derated, perhaps even. Um, then you got climb, cruise, and go around. Cool. All right. You got your flap setting indication. Ooh, this is interesting. I wanted to see this. I wanted to see what the flap settings were because that tells me if I can use, what I can use on my uh, honeycomb, if I'm gonna use my one that has 
flap detents or not. So we got a flaps one, five, 10, 20, 25, 30. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're not using the Airbus one. And I think the 737 has more to detent. So we might not use the 737, but I think the detents might line up. So we got one, five, 10. Mm, I don't have a 20 on this, dang. So I might need to get another detent um, set up for that then. I just realized this has stops for the detents too on the way up and down, that's cool. I never noticed that. If you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about. I got these little um, 3D printed things. So my honeycomb, instead of just being the plain flat lever that you move with no detents, you actually, when you set it up on here, it actually sits in these detents and you have to lift this to be able to move it and then it clicks in so it holds it into place. So it just adds a little more realism. I have a 737 one. And then I have an A321, although the A321 works for every Airbus because they're all zero, one, two, three, full. Um, so that's cool. Well, well I, of course, guess it's I should. Possible. They're on instruments. Holy crap! One year of tier three subs, sir, you are insane. How are you doing this morning, Ride Dog? Yeah, I I just realized I'd never showed this off. So I have this one for the 737. You can see it says 737. And then I have this one for the uh, Airbus, because Airbus is super simple and just says one or zero one two three full A320. And actually, as far as this flat lever is concerned, so this is a 3D printed part, and this little add up, there's a little add on here too. That's a 3D printed part that comes with a spring. This is what the normal honeycomb flat handle looks like and you just slide it and there's no detents. So, um, yeah, I got this cause I was like, oh, that's cool. That'll make it a little more realistic. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's two more settings on this. I might fiddle with this and make it work for the 747, but it would be pretty sweet if I could, if the same person I bought these from makes one for the 7.4, because then I could have actual detents. I'd also like one for the 7.5, because I have the 7.5, and that'd be dope. Doing okay running on three hours of sleep? Oh, Jesus. I'm good. Just check out the new 7.4. Um, you missed a little bit, but not much. And also, once again, thanks, man. 12 months of Tier 3, you're insane. You've, you've hit that 12-month Tier 3 level i you you can i think you can retire down to tier one um i ordered them online so off of etsy or something like that i found them because and i had the thought i was like oh man i wonder if someone 3d prints these and sure enough here we go um i'm gonna put the 737 one on for now because i want to use the actual flap lever i don't want to use the little flap selector thing so let's see if these line up because that'd be dope if they did oh okay hold on let's do this also one cool thing right on check this out all these camera views i guess it helps if i go back to the all these camera views so this one captain fo Lower pedestal, mid pedestal, or really more like instrument panel, overhead panel, engineer panel low, engineer panel high, over wing view. I think I hit all those right. iPad view. And now, these were all preset. I didn't have to dick around with it. May go for that two year already halfway there. Okay, man. I don't know. I mean, eventually I'm going to be flying and other shit's going to be going on. Yeah, engineer panel, man. Something different for me. Haven't dealt with this in real life. That's for damn sure. 
thankfully, because that would have meant I would have been an engineer for a while before flying. But anywho, continuing on our merry way through the different panels here, let's go back to the captain's side. So we were just looking over here, and then I was going to see if these flap detents line up at all. So here's flaps one. Yeah, it's angry. Here's flaps two for the 737. It's still not in. There's flaps. What's well, five on the 737 detent? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to use this for now. There's 10. I'm going to need to. Uh... Well, those lined up kind of. I'm going to need to see if I can find um, someone who makes detents for the 7.4 because that'd be dope. It just add that little bit of extra realism. And also, honestly, if I'm using this one, let's go back to the full camera view again. If I'm using the 737 one with my honeycomb and it has all those settings, though, don't they don't line up with the 74 anyway, so I'm gonna struggle getting into the right setting anyway. So we'll be putting this little flap handle away and we will just use the uh there's a different switch we'll be using for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that up. And we'll go real quick and look at the little honeycomb setting menu so you can actually see how we dick around with that. So right now, 17, this is set to flaps right here. And you can see what it should look like. There's also this flap lever over here. Since I don't have detents right now for this, I'm not going to use it because it's just going to mess this up. So instead... We'll use the flap handle over here. So you can see flaps down a notch, flaps up a notch is already set. Um, ooh, you know what I should do? I should add a profile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seven forty-seven profile. Seven forty-seven. Ooh, not seven fifty-seven. There we go. There we go. Seven forty-seven profile. All right. Your device is uncalibrated, so every time you do this, you gotta recalibrate it. Ooh, that's not good. Come on, honeycomb. Oh, no. There we go. Not sure what was up with that. It's pretty unusual for this thing to act up. Ignore that access for now. Center all controls, yep. That basketball player who sits in the seat. The bench guy. Um, boom. This is what we're up to on this one. So. So just like it says, that is throttle one. This will be throttle two. This will be throttle three. This will. I screwed that up, didn't I? One, two, whoops, three, and four. So those should all be set. Yep, those are all good. Sweet. Um, flaps to none. Speed brake will be speed brake. Where is it? Collective one of those speed brakes. There we go. Flaps down a notch. Flaps up a notch. Gear up. Gear down. Um, yeah, let's do trim wheel. So trim wheel. I think this one was up right now. Pitch trim up. Yep. And then trim wheel down. Pitch trim down. Mechanical, not servo. That's what you want because that means it moves slower. I'm not going to fiddle with any of those buttons. I'm not sure if this is going to... Do what I want or not.
Yeah, so that switch I'm going to have to leave as is. So this autopilot panel is kind of hard to program, honestly, um, and have things line up. And also, a vast majority of the time, I click the actual buttons on the autopilot panel, so I don't really use it too much. Um, oh, we should do the yoke. Pitch and roll are set. The hat switches are fine. This switch right here, number three, the one behind the yoke, like I said, that needs to be control wheel steering. There we go. And the red one should be disconnect servos flight director. I need an autopilot disconnect like yoke button because that doesn't it works the way it's supposed to autopilot blah 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 hmm Okay, I think that button's fine then. Disconnect flight servos. This other button I have nothing for. This button I have nothing for right now. This one will probably be uh, the voice commands. Got roll trim, roll and yaw. Interesting. Usually don't mess with those anyway. All right, that's really it. Oh, hell no. These switches need to not be set to anything on the yoke. This is where you run into issues. When you have conflicting stuff, it causes big problems. Do nothing. Do nothing. If I copy paste that, that'd probably be way easier. That's probably a good call. Yep. This is where switches will end up causing you grief on a plane like this. You do not want conflicting stuff. And by conflicting, I mean that this switch could be set to one thing and in the plane it's set to something else because I'm setting it via the switches in the simulator, not the switches on the yoke. These switches are much more appropriate for if you're flying like a uh, 172. They're pretty damn perfect, honestly. Um, cause they line up with, uh, the switches, but in a 747, not so much. All right. Those are all set to do nothing. Let's make sure we have the magneto set to do nothing as well. Otherwise weird things are going to start happening at random times. We're going to be sitting there like what? in the shit is going on why is the plane doing random stuff all right so you finally submitted your application to spacex last night nice that'd be cool if you got selected for that man all right so let's see okay so those need to be reversed and the speed brake one isn't working at all cool <laughs> Oh, the fun of setting up throttles and such. So reverse, 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 reverse. I'm going to assume the speed brake one isn't moving because there's no hydraulics. Um, And then let's set up our reverse thrust as well for those, shall we? So engine one, thrust reverse, thrust reverse. Old Max Engine 1, Old Max Engine 2, Old Max Engine 3, Old Max Engine 4. I wish I could simulate um, not doing maximum with it, but it doesn't quite work that way. I'm not even sure if this is going to work or not. So I have them set. We'll see if it ends up working or not. There we go. Flaps. Cool. All right. That's all set. We got our stab trim right there. We got a wheel down here, and then we got... That's pretty intense. 
bring the Yokes back. Okay. Green band select. Autopilot nose down. Mid autopilot nose up. Our airplane nose down. Airplane nose up. Okay. There's the parking brake. We got our comms down here. So that's the volume. This would be where I'm assuming listening and Oh, so this is how you listen to. That's nice. So that's the which one you're talking on. Easy peasy. Simple radios. Nothing complex there. Hold on. Let me move myself over here. Radios, ADF. Another VHF radio down here. This would be VHF3, it looks like. We got another SIVA down here. So a total of three SIVAs, I think. Yep. So I'm going to have to learn how to use that. That'll be fun, too. Uh, we've got our transponder. We've got our thrust mode selector. Auto throttle mode, EPR, mock, or speed. Okay, that's cool. That's easy enough. Decrease or return. Aileron trim, rudder trim, lighting, warning horn cut out. Be gear warning horn, I assume. Weather radar. ADF, VHF. Looking good. Um, we've got our gear selector, of course, autopilot. We already did all that. How about on the FO side? Anything different? Oh, this is nice. They have uh, the uh, iPad over here, too, so you can choose to fly as an FO or a captain. That's very nice. That's the radar panel. Captain has a tiny one over there, too. Okay. All right, let's go to the overhead now. Let's see where all the systems are. So we got flight control system switches to disconnect certain flight controls. Got your yaw dampers. Which look like they're just engaged. Auto brakes up here. That's a little different, but okay. And a skid. Okay. Body gear steering. So take off and landing, it's disarm, but then taxi, you arm it because the plane's so dang big. Never even thought of that. That's kind of cool. Um, storm light on or off. So we have your typical lights are at the bottom of the panel. So that's easy peasy. We got outboard, inboard landing lights. We got runway, turn off lights, nav, beacon, strobe, wing, logo. Um, No nose light. That's kind of surprising. So I'm guessing just use your inboard landing lights for... Uh, taxi i should have started up here here's your fire handles here's the ins system mode selecting so standby nav all right engine indications so flight start ground start so there's the sorry engine ignition i'm a ding dong so there's the starting panel but it says that's just the ignition i wonder if the other starting you have to go over yeah, that's literally just ignition. Okay. I wonder if that is what you use to actually start the engines or if there's something on the uh, engineer panel as well. Compass, servo, or slaved, or DG mode. So slave means it's going to be slaved to a uh, flux gate compass, uh, which will be out on the wing. Okay. Alternate gear extending. Cell call, I'm choosing which one. So I'm assuming this would be something you'd have turned on if you're trying to. I'm not even sure what that is. Cell call is usually like the way a company the company would con try to contact you. So maybe that's exactly what that is. They'd send some sort of ping and it would let you know. So we'll have to look at that. Um, unstable VSAM. That looks like an HF radio for overseas communication. And that's probably exactly, yeah, that's an HF radio and that's an HF radio. Okay, cool. Got wheel well fire detection. We got cockpit voice recorder. We have our other, our second INS, so three INSs. Start valve. Armed or off, okay. 
Standby ignition, one, two, or normal. Emergency lights. Uh, cabinet interphone is up here. Oh, that's cool. Those are the what those buttons looked like. No smoking. Fasten seatbelt. Call the ground crew. Oh, flight deck door release. Okay, windshield wipers. Engine compass. Evac signal. Interesting. So it's built in. There's a built in signal. Okay. Alternate flap extension, HF radio again. Radio master bus. This is nuts. Stall warning system. Uh, over speed test system, over rotation test system. Call anti ice, wing anti ice. Probe heaters, window heat. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of a typical spot for the anti-ice stuff to be. Okay, so there's the overhead panel. Now to the engineering panel. <laughs> Let's tip it down a little more. He has some radio stuff over here as well. So he can listen on the radios and lighting controls for the panel are right here. He has his own set of engine readouts. This appears to all be the fuel system. That's cool, as fuel used. Fuel temperature checkers, so you can toggle between the different fuel temps to see what they are. Um, we've got reserve fuel for number a number one reserve tank and a number four reserve tank. That's interesting. Got your boost pumps. Got cross feed valves. Okay, so it doesn't cross feed into the actual engines itself. It's just you literally can open the valve, so you'd want those to all be closed, I'd assume. For okay, no, that makes sense because you want the m most outer um, valves, the most outer fuel to drain first. So you probably just leave those open. That's probably normal, so it can feed fuel from the outer and go to the inner okay center wing that's going to be typically left empty fuel heaters n2 versus our the n1 versus n2 engine vibe indications uh body gear steering primary or alternate okay that's fairly straightforward um over here we have here's the apu okay this is the electrical system okay good joke this all is the electrical system so we got pa uh, pastor auctions up there galley power more galley power dc isolation stuff DC meters so you can read what the DC load is on all these so you can see for example the battery we've got 28 volts exactly what you'd want available um AC essential bus telling it its priority what you want it to pull off of okay um standby power yes I'll have to control all these while flying it. But once you're in the air, tip. I think. <laughs> I think there usually isn't too much to do back here. But yes. Um, there is a checklist included with this plane, though. That is one thing that's amazing with this. You can see it has a checklister, it has performance info, and it shows and hides it. And the checklist is like a. It reads it out to you like uh, you would actually do in a real crew environment. Oh, my watch says it's been an hour since I've been on my butt or off my butt. So I need to uh, stand up and do like three squats or something. So hold on. Ready? Three squats. You don't get to watch me do them now. I'm at five squats, by the way. Oh, uh, it didn't record him. Okay, try again. Ready? 
Record them again. So here goes 15 reps. <laughs> there we go. It says I stayed active. Good to go. This is why you tier three just randomly gets up. Yeah, so the I started running last week again, and I ran every day last week, which is good. And I remember that even though I have a iPhone, I used to have Andro uh, Samsung phones, so I have a Samsung Galaxy Gear because I had been too cheap to buy an I Apple Watch. I almost called it an iWatch. Anyway, because the one I want is like six hundred dollars, and I'm like, yeah. And then I remembered I can use this. So it still works and it still interfaces with the iPhone. Obviously not as well, but whatever. All right. Says so DC system. This must be the AC system. It is. I'm sorry. The APU on this plane has two generators attached to it. That's how big this plane is. Holy shit. Look at that. Two generators on the APU. That's nuts. Oh, this is fun. So we can't just say APU generator on or off. Closed or trip. I'm sorry, what's that? Is that another one? AKA on or off. That's how old this thing is, right? It's using like proper things. Look at this. Look at how many freaking things there are. Okay, so first you close or trip the APU generators, right? And then you gotta close and trip that those ones. And then they'll be producing power, right? Then I gotta close another another relay that allows the power to go to the uh wait. Okay, this is the feed from the APU generator supplying power. This is the external power. That makes sense. Then you come down here and you close the bus ties. <laughs> Split breaker system close, so... Oh wait, no, you're gonna leave that open most of the time, so you keep... It's two halves of the system, you keep them separate. You can see right here, separate. Okay, so you'd close, 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 close. So then your bus ties, those are closed, and you can see right here, so you were allowing power to flow from the APU to this gauge. And then you keep going from here, close that, you allow it to go to the bus. The bus is just a simple way of saying a thing full of things that need power, okay? Um, if the engine has started, you can. that's this side of the system. So this is APU side and external power side. This is engine driven generator side, okay? So you can see the constant speed drive oil temperature, which constant speed drive, which actually I'm impressed that 747 200 had constant speed drives on the 727. If I ever get that, which I will, I'm going to get the 727 in this game because the plane's cool, too. It also has an engineer panel. That one doesn't have constant speed drive. You actually have to. I need to explain what a constant speed drive is first. So when you have a generator, right? You want it spinning at a certain RPM and you don't want that RPM to change because if that RPM changes, the frequency of the uh, current coming out changes, right? So the frequency that it changes, 600 hertz, or in this case in planes, they run at usually, uh, apparently this one's 400 hertz. Yeah, 400 is what it wants on this one. So 400 hertz is most planes. Um, I don't remember why. There's a good reason for it to run at 400 hertz. It also runs at three phase power. We're not going to get into that. Um, but basically what a constant speed drive does is as the engine speeds up and slows down, it allows for the generator to still be spinning at the, the appropriate speed. Make sense? So older planes didn't have constant speed drives. And one of the jobs of the engineer was he had to keep an eye on these things as they were fiddling with the power. 
up front, moving, pushing power up and down, and they'd have to sit there and they'd have to tweak manually tweak the speeds of the uh, transmission on the generator, basically. Concept speed drive does the work for you, so yay. That's what most modern planes have, and that means I don't have to fiddle with it. As opposed to the 727, you actually have to sit there and set it. So these are the engine generators, and it's just like up here. To allow the engine generator to per blah, 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 blah. to allow the engine generator to throw its power towards the bus, you'd have to close it. Oh man, such so that's, that's the electrical system. I feel like I was. Here's what's crazy about this electrical system, okay? And actually, kind of beautiful. The way this is set up. It shows you everything that the plane is doing. Like, you're actually physically doing it, and it's drawn right in front of you, right? There's a relay here, there's a relay here. You're the one actually opening and closing these relays. So what's kind of beautiful about it, in a way, is it's super simple because you see exactly what it's doing. I know I said it. I just called it super simple. I know you probably think I'm insane for saying that, but I'm just saying because it's right here in front of you. It's spelling out what's happening. So to me, it makes perfect sense. I just had to work my way through it. As opposed to a modern plane, you just go, you'd be up here, right? And you'd be looking at the overhead panel and there'd be like a switch that says Gen 1 and you'd just be like, Boop, and it's on. And it does all this other crap in the background on its own, right? It closes all these freaking relays on its own. You essentially do this, boom, and then it does all the rest of this crap for you. <laughs> so this, you're kind of just manually doing it. This is something I was concerned about going into this. I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to understand this crap. But I actually do, which is kind of cool. It makes sense. I mean, there's going to be parts where I'm like, these are the galley power buses, and it's powering things in the galley. I don't know which each bus is connected to in the galley. If I was actually the flight engineer on this plane, I would be required to know that. And it really wouldn't be that hard to memorize, honestly, if you're sitting here doing it. So anyway, moving on. What do we got over here? This is the aircon system. And here is the new... Blah, 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 blah. Let's just do it this way. This whole center stack right here is the pneumatic system, which includes the air conditioning and pressurization. This is the pressurization panel down here. This is the bleed air panel. You can see the research fans and you can see the bleed air. So bleed air is what you actually get the pressurized air from the APU or the ground carts or the engines to supply the packs. Pack is a pneumatic air conditioning kit, which is fancy talk for air conditioning. Um, oh, wow, I didn't know that. These old 747s had a humidifier. I guess that makes sense. On those longer flights, you want some humidity in the air. Um, and up here, you can see this is just temperature control, so auto, auto, auto. Unless you want to roast them out to get them off the plane quicker. Ha! Um, trim air. Okay, that's pretty simple, actually. So this would be... Packs on... I'm not sure the difference between those. Hmm. That's definitely closed. That's... Oh, okay, that's half packs. Okay, that's half flow. That makes sense. So you probably go to half flow when you're down low, and then you go full flow when you're up high. Look at that. That's pretty nifty and intuitive. Closed, so the line isn't complete. Eh, we're letting half the air through. Let it all through. Okay, cool. Got it. Oh boy, what do we have over here? Equipment cooling. So that's just going to be fans. That keeps the uh, avionics cool because the avionics are typically in an area and they're full, well, crap on this plane. It's all going to practically be solid state stuff. It's not even going to be chips and server like things. But um, it'll literally be like rack full of electronics. So there'll be a fan going over that. Aft cargo heat. 
so and lower cargo detection so the reason why there's going to be an aft cargo heat is that thing's way in the back and it it will get air from the rest of the plane but it may or may not be pressurized i don't know if it was pressurized on this plane or not if it's not pressurized then it's probably not actually getting any air from the plane or even if it is the air it's getting is like all right we heated the cabin now the leftovers are going into the cargo so it's not going to be very warm at that point if you're on a longer flight so you'd be turning that sucker on lower cargo fire detection cool so you got the tests and everything for that engine fire detection oh that's kind of cool the nacelle temperature. So this is what you'd use to tell if there's a fire in the engine because the, let's be clear, there's, with jet engines, there's always an engine fire while it's on, okay? It's just whether or not it's where you want it to be in the engine, right? Because you got the fan, which starts the compression section. Then you have the combustion section, and then you have the exhaust section. The flame should stay in the combustion section, which is shaped kind of like a donut on jet engines. And they should stay within this like inner circle of the combustion section too. If they go outside of that, then you have an engine fire. So there's always a fire in a jet engine. It's just whether or not it's where it's supposed to be. So. There's one for you to ponder and giggle about. Pilotisms. Um, hydraulic system. Engine pump, engine pump, engine pump, engine pump, air pump. Oh, that's clever, so it can run off the uh, pneumatics. Cool. So you would turn that to auto and or continuous before the engines are started, I'm guessing, just so you have some brake pressure. Don't tell me that when your girlfriend's about to hop on a plane and fly home. I mean, that's the way internal combustion works, right? There's a fire. It's just whether or not it's where you want it to be. If it's not where you want it to be, it's a problem. If it's where you want it to be, it's normal. Um, landing gear, a whole bunch of enunciators for that. Good Lord. Anti-skid enunciators, brake temperature monitor, which you'd go left front, right front, left. Yeah. EF DARS. I'm not sure what the heck that is. I'm going to guess that this is something like a electronic flight data recorder. I'm guessing. Yeah, electronic flight data air recorder system. Something like that. Any skid landing gear tilt inputs. No idea what that would be for. <laughs> Very important how much potable water you have left on the plane. Because that tells you how much more coffee you can have. <laughs> Crew call, aka the get me more coffee button. <laughs> all right. And then, of course, you have all the circuit breakers, which hallelujah, they didn't model those. Oh, my gosh, there's more. Auction regulator. Oh boy. Um, also have a total air temperature readout back here. You got a chrono and a watt clock. APU, hour meter, and a fuel jettison panel. Wait, does this work? Holy crap, there's a fuel jettison panel I can play with? That is sweet. So if you have too much fuel because you're about to go fly a really long flight and you need to come back and land, you can't land unless you jettison some fuel. So guess what? You would jettison the fuel via that. That's cool. But we're definitely playing with that at some point. I know I got too excited about that. Get over it. All right. So that's all the panels. The trick is remembering where they all are when we're flying along and need to do shit quickly. So... Let's do a quick flight. Let's do Chicago to Detroit because we are in Chicago here. All right. So let's do a quick flight. Chicago to Detroit. 
I use the term quick pretty loosely because it's probably going to take me forever to get this thing running. But such is life. All right, so since we're doing this for the first time, I'm not just going to wing it. This is going to end horribly, but standby power, I, well, first things first, you got to turn the battery on, right? Battery's on. Let's get rid of the music for now so we can hear this beautiful thing start up for the first time. APU. Oh, this is so cool. I can do the fire test and everything. So fire test one, fire test two. Good. Fault test. Fault test. Cool. Squib test. Working. Uh, start it up. Watch, it's gonna be like, yeah, it's not gonna start unless you give it fuel flow, bro. Why isn't it working? Do I need to do something with fuel? <laughs> Am I missing something here? <laughs> start. Ah, there we go. See the DC amps are coming up. Or right, because it was, did you see how many amps it was using? It was using nearly a hundred amps to crank that thing and get it started. There you go, there's our pooter running, our pooter APU. So the APU's all the way back here on this plane. That thing's probably almost as powerful as the engines that I had on the CRJ 200. Back to our engineer panel. Perfectly quiet up here, like nothing's going on. And we can see that it is uh, up and running. So let's go APU generators on. And here we have some pow at least basic power running to the, uh, I'm gonna assume those are the avionics cooling and Oh, no, that's all the buses. All the buses came on, I think. See, here's one thing that's weird. Where's the readout to tell me that all the buses are working? I mean, obviously everything turned on, but... It seems like... There should be a power readout. APU bleed air open. We have pressure. Isolation valves are um, open. Let's go to half airflow since we're on the APU. I bet if we go to full, it pisses the APU off. Nope, it's working. Research fans on. Supply vent fans on. Gaspers on. Oh, that's the gasper in here. Screw that. I don't want to listen to that. You know how I said I wasn't going to wing it? I think I lied. Let's see how much we miss in just the basic startup of the plane. So APU is running. We have AC power established. We got airflow. Uh, hydraulics. I was right about that. So you turn those on. Boom. You got some hydraulic power. Cool. And go back to off. So. Oh, actually, you know what? Go to continuous real quick. This is kind of nice because you can check your hydraulic quantity levels. So that looks good. Go back to off. Also, that should have pressurized the brake accumulator, which we should see up here. Look at that. Hydraulic brakes. So the brakes are good now. This is bitching that there isn't enough pressure in the uh, hydraulic system, which isn't surprising. What system is that? System two is what the brakes are on. Okay. Um, I don't even know where to begin now. There's so much stuff. Oh, gosh. I guess just go through panel by panel. That set, that set. This is just engine crap, so I don't care. This is radio crap, so I don't care. Galley power on. Galley chillers on. Galley and laugh fan on. Generator normal. Reduced. I don't know. 
isolation, everything's good there. Oh, I'm a ding dong. I could have looked right here at the different. Or not. There we go. You can see how much power the APU is generating. Cool. All right. Uh, air conditioning. Pack controls are all on auto. Humidifier can be off because we're down low. Pack 1's looking good. Pack 2's looking good. Pack 3's looking good. Let's get real weather going. Let me get Active Sky up and running. There we go. Not that you can see it outside at the moment. Yeah, look at that. Now it's like, oh shit, the weather changed. All right, uh, pressurization. Okay, so this is thousands of feet cabin altitude. set the barrow set so i'm gonna have to get that information once i've actually gotten the barometric information uh fuel panel i don't need anything from the fuel right now although it is really weird that i don't see any info it's really weird So these must not turn on until I get the uh, engine generators running then, I guess. But how would you check how much fuel you have before you depart? We'll come back to that. Engine squibs, they're working good. Oh, that's the nacelle temperatures, bell reset. Let's do fire test. So you could see right there that's saying like this is showing that there'd be a test, although if we look up here, I don't hear a bell or anything happening. That's interesting. I feel like that should be going. False work, false work. Why isn't that working? So when I go to fire tests like this, we should be hearing the fire bell and all those engine um, handles should be lighting up. I'm not sure why they're not probably because something on that other panel that's not set yet. Primary system four for brake pressure. Okay. Electric pump hydraulic system four. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, Equipment cooling's fine. Dust for smoke. Yep. Good there. Oh, wing overheat system test. Okay. I think all this stuff's set, other than I'm not sure why we don't get a fuel readout. I'm going to assume it's just a power thing, as far as the way the power is set up right now. Let's go to the overhead panel. Um, we're going to need to get the INSs aligning. Although I'm not going to use those, I'm just going to use VOR now to make life simple. Radio master on. Let's do this properly. Go this way. Auto brake is off. Good. Any skid on. That would be once you before you start taxing. I'm assuming when the tugs are pushing you, you leave it disarmed. Nav ignition's fine. I don't really need to fiddle with any of that. We would want the nav lights on at this point. Light deck doors open. That's fine. No smoking sign on. You could hear the ding. Emergency lights to arm. <coughs> good, that's good, that's good. That's something you probably need uh, pneumatic pressure for, so the engines would have to be running. Anything I need to set down here? Why is that radio not on?
Apparently I'm missing something there. All right, let's see how we did just with the initial start. It, I'm going to miss some tests in there, I'm sure, but let's just do it. Uh, before start for the... Oh my gosh, look at all the stuff. Before start checklist, please. Gear lever and lights. Down and check. Brakes. Parked. Start levers. Off. Radios. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to get that radio on. I'm missing a switch. There's the radio masters. I'm not sure. Wait. Flight control, hydraulic power. Shit. I screwed on. that up. I'm missing this somewhere. And it probably involves this, too. Let's keep running through and see what happens. Flight control, hydraulic power. On. INS. Check and nav. Compasses. Slaved. Window heat. Damn. Surprised they want the window heat on already. On. Seatbelts and no smoking. Mm. On. Emergency lights. Armed. Exterior lights. Hold on. Check. Flight instruments. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing stuff back there. Because my attitude indicator hasn't spun up. Probably need to set my current position. Yep, that's exactly what I need to do. Let's pull up Navigraph. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And let's pull up Chicago. And the parking gate coordinates. Where are we again? Charlie 18. So... We are at North. Forty one fifty eight point eight four one. 58.8 and west west oh no that messed it up so we're at north Forty one fifty eight point eight and West 
8754 I'm not sure if that was uh, setting my current position or if I was setting a waypoint in, to be honest. I mean, maybe I need to go to a line first to get it to a line. That side's aligned. Why is that side happy and my side's dead? Okay, I'm missing I'm missing a master switch over here. That's exactly what's going on. That's why the radio didn't turn on either. Radio master panel essentials on. And yet it didn't all turn on. Where is the radio master for this side? I need some help. Hmm. Hey, Google. Never mind. I forgot I actually have that as a thing, so I can't just yell it. I meant to go and actually look at Google. <laughs> Let's see. go into the aircraft files and see if it included a little uh, thing showing you where stuff is because I could not see where the switch is. Manuals. Oh boy, here we go. Intro. Yeah, let's start there. Not in the intro. Ooh, cockpit. There we go. Let's do that. Radio. Radio master bus essential and number two switches. Uh-huh. And yet that appears to have not done it. Radio INS switch. Oh, wait. Is that set on INS still? No, it's on radio. Maybe I'm just having a malfunction here? Everything's in the green? Excellent. Making that money. I haven't... I try not to look because I found that not looking results in me tinkering less and making more money. Oh boy. Altimeters and clocks. Figured it out. One zero one eight. Set and cross check. Um, Radio INS switches. I'm a ding dong. Standby Radio. power is kind Radar of important. That's why the fuel wasn't showing up either. <laughs> Sorry. Radio and transponder. Um, transponder should be in standby. Oh boy, this is gonna take a while. Let's 
Sorry, what else? Radar and transponder. Radar should also just be in standby. standby. Indicator lights. Check. No idea Engine which lights. Oh, those ones. Ice. Probably. Off. Those are off. Stall warning. Hold on. Um. Check. Ah. Back airspeed cool. warning. Damn. Check. Auto brakes. Check and off. Body gear steering. Hold on. Arm. Hold on. Anti skid. On. Autopilot and flight director. Check and off. Takeoff warning. Hmm. And I don't recall seeing a takeoff warning. What, this sound effect? That's the stick shaker. Um, takeoff warning, takeoff warning. Kind of hopping all over the place and not doing it in the flow, so it's kind of rough. I'm not seeing a takeoff warning panel. Autopod, auto thrust. Ground procs test, rudder ratio test, altitude alert test, max indicate reset, instrument warning test. Oh, poop. I didn't start it there, so. Where was he? Takeoff warning. Where's the takeoff config warning? It's gotta be here somewhere. side maybe no huh where is this button damn it where are you hiding it's gonna be staring me right in the face I guarantee it so let's do this go to the overhead no 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 no, 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 I don't know where it is. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's guarded here. That's an overheat test. Oh, uh, if I were the takeoff warning button, where would I hide? That's a fire warning button. Altitude alert, instrument warning. Well, goddamn, where is it hiding? Uh, I gotta pull up the freaking guide again, because I can't find it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, that's a thing. I kind of like it, though, because it's just like, uh, hold on. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but... Take off war. Hundred fifty-eight references. This could take a hot second. Ooh. Nope. This is the engineer panel, which has its own separate checklist, which is kind of nice. Mm. 
You know what might be better? Warning. <laughs> but, but where is it? <laughs> this guy doesn't even show me. Take off warning. Vance files full forward and check that the sound. Oh. Check. Auto flight enunciators. Check. GPWS. Damn. GPWS test. I can do that. That was down here. I saw that a second ago. Oh, huh. Instrument warning. Hmm. Check. Flight director computer selectors. Check. Instrument source selectors. Normal. Reserve brake valve. Closed. Spoilers. Down. Static selectors. Normal. Oxygen mask and regulator. Check and emergency off. Brake pressure. Check. Stabilizer trim. Check and on. Rudder and aileron trim. Check. Checklist completed. Okay, I only missed like a couple things. Now let's see what I missed on this one. Battery. On. APU panel. Check. Auxiliary power. Hold on. Check. Hold on. Hold on. I have a problem here. Why'd they make the flight engineer sound like the foreign guy? Huh? Huh? I'm kidding. I'm sure it was totally benign. I'm just being silly. Auxiliary power. Check. Engine oil quantity. Check. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where's the engine oil quantity? Nine, seven, four, zero, nine there it is. Pounds. There's the engine oil quantity. It's a few gallons for each engine. Fuel quantity in pounds. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Fuel quantity. There's the total. One, nine, seven, four, zero, five pounds. Fuel panel. Ah, uh, this. <laughs> Did you hear what he just said? Ah, uh, this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do on this next. Here, I... Oh, wait, no, not jettison pumps. That's a bad idea. Better? Oh, boy. Now I gotta read what it says to do for the fuel panel. When refueling is finished, set the gross weight gauge the current aircraft air, blah, 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 current aircraft weight i have not done that cycle each cross feed in valve including the reserve valves and observe cross feed valves illuminating okay check the number one and two reserve valves are closed I see number one and number four reserve. That must just be a typo. Turn on all four boost pumps and a fuel and center tank left override jettison pump. Check each shutoff valve switch is open and guard closed and that the engine valve light is off. Oh wait, those are supposed to be open, Never mind. But what if all the engine valve lights are on? Oh, they should all, yeah, they should all be extinguished.
They're not extinguishing and I don't know why. Press mold fuel gauge is test switch. Air zero, okay. And air four, okay. Check each fuel tank reads a shit ton of fuel and gets angry. Yep, it did that. Okay, so the engine valves need to close and not sure how to accomplish that. I want the engine valves close. Did I miss something? I must have missed something. But it says I've been fine so far. Those are in the down position, so that shouldn't be affecting it. Why won't the engine valves close? Uh. Gotta look up what the heck it means. This is what I meant by this is going to be a little different because, yeah. You always forget that command. Yeah, unfortunately, those still aren't work. I, For some reason, I have not been able to get that bot to work. So what I think I might end up doing is instead of using that bot, just switch to using the in Twitch thing where it's points, and I can just add sound effects that way. So you can just use the in Twitch one and then make my life easier, I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Here we go. Fuel pressure, fuel heat, and engine valves. Uh-huh. You don't tell me how to... Get the lights to turn off, though. Why aren't they turning off? Oh, God, it's so annoying. I don't understand. Those should be off right now because these boost bumps are running. I need an adult. Hold on, let's pull up their little quick start video. See what I'm screwing up. The GPU here. 
then comes to life. Uh-huh. With Antis. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You wanna set, but have a great go for the APU start. And that means you click down. So you click up. Start uh, the APU. Gotta wait a little bit. I'll run it. Uh, can go on. But live. Um, Here we go. Fuel, fuel. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we have to set the cruise altitude. So if you will be cruising, I don't know, that uh, right here for a date there, uh, 12 degrees back, if which the brakes, we are ready, we are at, after you would. Well, he didn't show what to do, so you know what, we're skipping it. Station <laughs> controls. Check and set. They're not really checking set Lead or whatever. Controls. Let's see. Are they not the way you want them? All right, back to the normal procedures thing. Uh, pressurization valley, yeah, 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 yeah. Bleed air and air conditioning, check both isolation valves are open, they are. Check all engine bleeds, valve closed and lights illuminated, uh-huh. Check pack operations and zone temperature control. So, but... I don't know what you want me to do! Close, close, close. Those are open. Those are on. Do you want half flow? Maybe? I don't know. Nope. That didn't make it happy either, so I guess I just click check for that. Hydraulic quantity. Whoops. Check. EPR computer. Wait. Go around. Circuit breaker. Check. Indicator light. Check. Electrical panel. Check and set. Air conditioning controls. Ah, uh, this. What's wrong with them? Maybe I should read the normal procedures. <laughs> Air conditioning controls. Oh, this. Yeah, I did what it said to do. Auto, 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 humidifier is on, we're in auto, trim air is on. I guess I'll close that, I don't really need them. We'll just say check. Fire control and wing overheat panels. Check and set. Equipment cooling. Check. Passenger oxygen. Check. Hydraulic panel. Check and set. Fuel jettison panel. Check. Crew oxygen. On. Oxygen mask and regulator. Check and emergency off. ADPs. Off. Checklist completed. Cool. Next one's after start. All right, that was a bit of a cluster. Um, let's go to Simbrief and let's actually uh, get a flight plan worked up to fly to Detroit. Oh, uh, you know what? It might not. Let's see if we can do it this way. Because it's probably going to not give me jetways or anything. I could just VFR it there. You want to just do a VFR flight to Detroit from Chicago to 747? It's actually probably not a terrible idea just to work through how the things work normally without dealing with IFR. Let's see, though, if this gives us a nice auto-generated route. You know what? No. We'll use Simbrief. Simbrief will do it and give me different routes and I can find one that's slant whiskey. Um, let's see. 
in brief. October 19th, it's offline. Tomorrow? Okay. Blah, blah, blah. We are, I have no idea what Pan Am's identifier is. I'm going to have to look that up in a second. Um, we're doing O'Hare to, we'll just do Detroit. Nice quick flight. Let's see if it even has a 742 on here. Look at that, it does 742. Pan Am, P-A-A, -A, Pan American Airways, I guess that makes sense. We're going to be flight number 169, because it's the first time I'm flying the 747-200, and it's going to be a cluster. Um, let's see if we can find a jet route. Make our life a little simpler here. I believe that might be a jet route. Let's see. The hail arrival. We got the Bradford arrivals, not our nav. We got Knox. Oh, that's Chicago. I'm a ding dong. Hold on. All of Detroit's. Detroit only has our half arrivals. We're going to fly at VFR. Screw it. We're just going to point that way, and I'll pick up some VORs along the way, and we'll just do it that way. That should work fine, honestly. So it'll be kind of IFR, kind of VFR. We'll wing it. How about that? We're going to wing it. What could possibly go wrong, right? So we're doing KORD to KDTW. I'm not going to auto-generate the route. And you know what? I can actually, I can make this route work. We'll go, AZO, which is Kalamazoo VOR, to, I think Jackson has a VOR, oh, it's a short range VOR though. Honestly, from AZO, we can, might be able to pick up the Detroit VOR, so we'll just do that, call it a day. Looks good. Simple, to the point. I like it. Um... So we'll snag that route, and we'll throw that into sim brief so it's manually done. All right. And generate flight plan. <clears throat> I'm not going to do this first flight on... Um, Oh, actually, there's probably not even any controllers on. Let's look at that sim real quick. If there are controllers, I'll do it on... That's not what I wanted. That's Valanta. Or, yeah, that is what I want, because it'll show me. If uh, we're showing any controllers in between here and there, I'll use that sim. But otherwise, this first flight, I'm just going to fly it. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't look like it. It's okay. Do that. Let's bring up Sim Toolkit Pro just so it's doing its thing. That's some nasty neck poppage that just happened. I hope the microphone didn't pick that up. That probably sounded pretty gross. So silly that I have to add aircraft into my fleet before it'll throw this aircraft up there, but whatever. Why not? Okay, cool. Let's throw the overlay up there.
Got our Navigraph good to go. Let's pull up the taxi chart. <clears throat> O'Hare. We're going to take off. We're just going to start flying east. We're going to climb, go over Lake Michigan, go until we pick up the Kalamazoo VOR, and then keep flying. And it's it's a pretty simple flight <clears throat> to even navigate VFR, so it'll be fine. So that's really all I need for that. Weather-wise... Let's actually see if we can make it do it the old-fashioned way. So on COM2, let's have the ATIS. It's 135.4. I hope that's the setting I can change so I don't have to flip through that many frequencies. I hate having to do that. That does not appear to be working. Interesting. I'm not sure why I'm not picking up the ATIS. Well, I'll cheat then. It's fine. I'll just use what it says on uh, my Active Sky. I was hoping I'd be able to pick it up just so I could hear it. All right. We've got... Does this not give it to me in, like, a normal readout? Winds 220 at 6. 10 statute mile visibility. Temperature 15, dew point 5. Altimeter 3014. Um, fuel wise, so I can get the fuel load right here. Lot fuel should be 35,000 pounds. Holy crap. Just to fly to Detroit, 35,000 pounds. And takeoff fuel should be... It has us cruising at 330. That seems excessive for such a short flight, but we'll give it a shot. Takeoff fuel should be 32,900. And we're flight 169, Pan Am. I have a feeling I'm going to end up flying this plane a lot. I will get much faster at it. It's just a matter of time. All right. So, winds 2206. That tells me we can use... Um, we'll have to take off 28 right, I'm assuming, just because of how big this plane is. Oh, we could do 27 center. They never depart off there. Yeah, they usually don't depart off that runway, but we'll go up to 27 center. 11,000 feet long. That should be plenty of runway. Um, we'll taxi there. Hold on. Let me actually pull this up so you can see what I'm doing. That is... That actually works well. So, uh, we'll... We're down here. You won't let me zoom in more than that? Since when's that a thing? That's weird. That's never been a thing. Oh. Um, we'll taxi out this way to Alpha, out Alpha 1, and then down... I can't even tell what taxi that is this supposed to be. Where is it even marked? Oh, it's old 27 left. They closed it. Wait, they closed 27 left? Well, that's depressing. I love that runway, because you'd land and you'd bloop. 
you'd be right on the taxiway, good to go. All right, well, we'll taxi down 27 left to pop a pop and take off of uh, 27 center. Is that runway even modeled on my version? Yeah, it is. Okay. We good. Hold on a second. One of my friends sent me a text a while ago. Alright, um, yeah, so that's all we really need to worry about. So let's get this show on the road, shall we? So, engine start. Looking back here, AP bleed's already open, so we're good there. We don't need to deal with anything with that. Maybe the packs need to be off so we have more airflow to the engines. Maybe half flow. Uh, let's call for our pushback as well. Hey, Captain, let me know where you want this thing. Yeah, wh let me know where you want this big honking thing. This massive thing. Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. Um, and let's start. Those are all easy to see, actually, so. I don't know. Maybe number two first. What one does the Hydrox run off of? That's the reserve. Yeah, we'll we'll start number two first. I guess. Number two, system one. Ground start. Oil temperature or pressure isn't coming up at all. All right, looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. Oh, it would help if I. Ready to start the engines. Armed the start valve. <laughs> ready for engine start. Parking brake released. Well, pressure's still not coming up. Here we go to the normal procedures again to try and figure this out. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toast connected, bypass pens inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. Here comes the pushback. Light them up. Oh, I had some things I think I missed back here. Place all main boost pumps to on. Uh-huh. I didn't set my fuel. Whoops, we'll get back to that. It's fine. Um... Those need to be on as well because the amount of fuel there. Open. All four bleed valves and check valve closed light stick extinguish. Close number one and three pack valves. Leave two open unless starting from a air cart. So one and three closed. Turn on electric pump. Hydraulic system four for start. Turn off galley power. EP 
Kiar and Todd. Turn on the beacon, arm the start valve, hold either engine for ignition one or two, either is fine to ground start. Observe that the valve opens at 20% and two, and two is on the engineer's panel, introduce fuel. Okay. So yeah, I had missed a bunch of stuff. Starting engine four. Not seeing it to come up. Just at about all. done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. Parking brake set. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. I don't see a start valve open message either. Starting engine four. Start a valve open. There it is. There's N2 coming up. Assuming 20% into, yep. And there's oil pressure. And two. Oh, that's cool. He calls it out. Oh, that's not what I want. Fuel on. And we're disconnected. Sig 110 on the right. Take it easy and have a safe flight. This thing's so high off the ground. <laughs> Your flow light up. This is why you need three people up here. You have to have people looking at three different engine panels stabilized. just to start an engine. Look out, being on parking here. <laughs> All right. And let's start number three. Starting engine three. The valve didn't open though. Starting engine three. Start a valve open. There we go. Have to hold it a little longer than I thought. You can see N2 coming up over there. Twenty percent and two. Fuel on. Light, Light up. up. Okay, this this aircraft's pretty cool because it's emulating all the stuff very well with the call outs and Thunder everything. Off. And it actually makes it so it's kind of doable with one person. Engine stabilized. Starting engine two. Got a valve open. 20% and two. Fuel on. Light up. This thing's so cool. <laughs> it's so big. Engine That's stabilized. What she said. Starting engine one. Start a valve open. Twenty percent and two. Fuel on. Light up. Light up. Twenty 
Start her off. Looks like it cuts out at 55% in two. stabilized. Good. After start checklist, please. After start checklist. Flight recorder. On. Start switches. Off. Beacon lights. On. Brake pressure. Check. Start levers. Idle detent. Engine and the ice. Off. Electrical panel. Ah, uh, this. So we switch it to the engine generators, turn those. Well, what else do I need to do on the electrical panel? Check voltages. Or general open lights extinguish. Close the split breaker system and observe that the open light extinguishes. So we do close that. Uh, close the APU bleed air. Allow two minutes before turning off the APU whenever possible, so it allows it to kind of cool down. Okay. Uh, check eight essential AC bus in the normal galley power switches are on. Trip off lights are all extinguished. Normal, on, trip off, will extinguish. Open all three pack valves. Check each corresponding pack switch for normal ACM outlet. Discharge temperature and airflow. Yeah, those will look fine. Check the door warning light annunciator panel. Check all four ADPs. All the air driven pumps look good. Oh, turn on all four ADPs. And turn the system four switch to off, which it looks like it automatically tripped itself. Check overheat pressure, low quality lights extinguished on the hydraulic pressures. That did not do whatever it wanted me to have done for the electrical panel though, so I'm not sure what else it wants. We're normal, normal. Normal, normal, that's on. Not sure what else there is for me to do up here. Maybe just stop the APU. Check. Ah, okay. Back valve. That makes sense. Open. Dual warning lights. Out. Hydraulic panel. Let's see. Check. Flight recorder. On. After start checklist completed. Cool. What's the next checklist? Taxi. We'll get to that in a moment. Um. Ba -ba 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 
go to home. One thing I did forget to do is set fuels and such. Oh my, that's a lot. Um... Where is it pulling this from? Oh wow, it's actually pulling this info from somewhere. We need to actually go look at this. Nose wheel uses... Yaw. Using the INS, we're using Imperial units. INS align will do fast. INS source reels fine. Sync captain and FO gauges, yes, will make all life easier there. That's fine. Auto throttle blocks user throttle. I don't know. It's not in there. Use scroll to change values. Oh, okay. All right, so let me pull up my sim brief here so we can figure out how I'm actually supposed to be loaded. Since I made a mess of this. All right, load sheet. 355 passengers. I love how it doesn't show me a total. A lot of people going from Chicago to uh, Detroit today. There you go, 355 passengers. Uh, cargo. That's right, this doesn't show that, it just shows payload. Payload, I'm at 108,300, and I should be at 81,650, so. Payload's correct now. Zero fuel weight should be 468339. That's pretty dang close. Um, ramp weight should be around 50,000. Yeah, so we have way too much fuel. Fuel, like I said, our ramp fuel should be 35,000 pounds. Should be all we need. So refuel, instant refuel. There we go. Okay, now we need to go back here. <clears throat> we actually need to set this back here. Oh, it looks like it already did for us. Gross weight. Is way off. Uh, 
Oh wait, no it's not. It did it right. My bad. 503,000. That is pretty damn close. Okay, so that is actually set now. We do need to set the altimeter back here. It's 31.4. And the flight cabin. I'm very confused as to what that's supposed to be. If this is 27,000 feet or if this side is the feet. I'm gonna have to read about that. We're just, we'll just leave it there. It's fine. If it blows up, it'll let us know. What could go wrong, right? Um, okay, I think we're pretty much good as far as that's concerned. Checklist, taxi, go. Taxi checklist, please. Flaps. Hold on. Flaps one. Flaps five. Flaps ten. Probably should have done performance before I started that. Flaps 10, 167 knots. Flaps 10. Flaps 10. Take off data, EPR, and airspeed bugs. Hold on. Set and cross check. Stabilize the trim. Mm. Stab trim should be set to your mother. 3.4. Initial pitch 17 degrees. Optimal climb at almost 300 knots. Oh my gosh. This thing's nuts. 3.4. Wait, that doesn't make sense. It's not even in the green. So you could see that down there. Check. Seat belt and shoulder harness. Check. APU. Off. Fuel heat. Off. Totalizer and gross weight. Set. Flight engineer and pilot panel. Check. Off cargo heat. Let's see. Where was that? There it is. Normal. Seat belt and shoulder harness. Check. Taxi checklist completed. Cool. All right. Let's taxi out. We're uh, just kind of an overhead view of where we're going to go to make this simple. We're just going to go up this way. We'll actually we'll go out here so we can join old 27 left here and then we'll taxi the end and go over to 27 center and do that so uh did i fly along with caesar yesterday as when i did not fly along with caesar Parking yesterday i was in a golf outing yesterday that we won i will add because yeah bring power up a bit oh it's moving i should be using track ir right now because it'd probably be amazing with this massive beast Actually, yeah, let's get track IR going. Hold on. Oh no, my brakes aren't working! The brakes are working! <laughs> oh, it helps if your uh, rudder's plugged in. Hold on. It's been an hour.
shower too. I need to get off my ass. I need to do more squats. All right, track IRs plugged in. And where the heck is my rudder plug? Rudder plug. Where are you? There it is. All right. Typically, it helps when you actually get these things uh, in and set, you know. Um, let's see if we can't use track IR without it being a pain in the hiney. I imagine it should work pretty well with these uh, cameras they already have set. There we go. Brakes are working. X camera enable. Oh, X camera. There we go, that's pretty good. We actually need to move forward a little bit though. X camera is fantastic, but annoying at the same time for those of you who are wondering. Okay, so screw track IR, I need to go through and set this up. X camera and its usual shenanigans. All right, parking brake. Parking brake set. Oops, parking brake Parking off. brake released. Let's go! Oh gosh, feels like we're going fast. <laughs> the nose tire did not appreciate that. This thing is huge. so far up in this thing i have i know people who fly this thing for cargo companies and man it must be interesting because good lord oh whoops Yeah, this thing you have to taxi slow, I imagine, because it's just so dang big. I'm going to murder my watch. All 
Alright, we're gonna taxi into this runway and then turn it around on that longer runway over there and that's where we're gonna take off from. Alright, let's get our runway heading program done. 273. going to be heading mode initially. We'll just do 10,000 at first. Ten thousand two hundred fifty knots. Actually, that's a good point. What are our speeds on this thing? Flaps one speed limits two seventy five. Good lord. Flaps 5 is 250. This thing's huge. <laughs> it needs flaps up to 10,000 feet. Good lord. The freaking whale. Literally. This taxiway looks kind of narrow at the end here. Work. Oh, I screwed up, didn't I? Well, no, not really. Using both the engines on the right to help us get this thing turning. This thing's huge. <laughs> awesome. I mean, from up here, it has to seem like you're going, like, past where you want to go. I wonder if that was good. Yeah, that was good. What's going to be really interesting is I don't think this thing gives you altitude readouts at all when you're coming into land. At least I don't. I don't know actually. So uh, that'll that'll be interesting. Looks like it has a modern VSI in it though. Oh no, there's altitude readout. Right there. I'm gonna have to flare really high though, I imagine. Alright, parking brake set. Before takeoff checklist. I think consideration. Check. Cabin alert. Check. Transponder. Mm. Check. Ignition. Hold on. Flight start. Body gear steering. Damn. Disarm. Back fouls. Uh, you have to close the packs to take off? That's weird. Close. Presentation mode selector. Auto. Fuel boost pumps. On. Cross feed valves. Check. Before takeoff checklist completed. Alright. Here we go. First takeoff in the 747 by Felis. So we're going to set our EPR 
up to there it looks like. Turn on the rest of our lights. Leaving body steering on there probably would have been a good call. Wow, I didn't need to overshoot it that much. That's kind of surprising. All right. Um, well, here goes nothing, I guess. Let's let her rip. Gosh, we're way too nose up. We're way too nose up. Trim, trim, trim. Gear up. My trim Gear switches up. aren't set. Sorry for the immersion breaking, but we were going to crash if I didn't go do this. That's weird. is very upset about something. This is interesting and kind of messed up right now. Yeah, well, I think it was overall kind of lightly loaded for real life. I don't know, honestly. We're about 10, so we can accelerate.
my trim not working the way it should is a real freaking problem right now, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I'm out of balance. Flaps up. Oh no, it was, okay, I see what was going on. It was it wasn't letting me accelerate anymore because I was gonna overspeed the flaps. They weren't all the way up yet. After takeoff checklist. Gear lever. Hold on. Off. Landing and logo lights. Hold on. Off. Ignition. Check. Seat belts and no smoking sign. Check. Back valves. Let's see. Open. Fueling. Ah, uh, this. Fuel systems down here, fuel heat, auto, 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 auto. auto. Off the fake of checklist completed. Yeah, I really like this plane. This is pretty cool. Wonder if there's a uh, sound options in here. Let's see, we got Avatab, low calculator, refuel, blah, blah, INS. Oh, you can kind of cheat. That's nice. Ground services, when you're fast load, checklist options. Nope. Just the in-game. to fiddle with that more when I'm not streaming so I can get the sound so it's a little less air noise and just a little more engine noise. Alright, so we're heading east. Let's see if we can pick up the Kalamazoo VR yet. More than likely not. One oh nine zero. Yeah, we're not picking it up yet. Well, let's do this then. Let's do... Chicago VOR, 10825. And it looks like it's gonna be... About a zero eight zero off of that. Probably helps if I turn on the flight directors. Oh, that's kind of cool. You don't actually need the flight director up for the autopilot to follow it. Man, 
and that pig's cool. <laughs> Nines and twos. Why is that not? You are one. That's right there. It's picking it up, but it's not functioning. Well, let's do this. We'll keep that up and we'll have uh, view R2 on uh, Kalamazoo's. it picks it up. Not sure why it's not functioning. We're almost over the lake already though. You can already see the other side of the lake. Probably helps that this thing climbs like a bat out of hell. This is cool. I'm probably going to be flying this plane a lot. It's so cool. And I can do an FMS if I want to do like a more modern flight. Look at this. It's almost at cruise altitude already. That's absurd. How much is it still climbing at 3,000 feet a minute? You know what? That's a better idea. Let's use some jetways that actually lead properly to where we want to go. So we need... Now we level on. A Northbrook VOR. Roger, thousand level off. And we should be on the 096 degree radial. We can maintain, let's actually go to the 080 heading. We'll maintain that till we intercept. The next VOR after that will be the Carlton VOR 15.7. That's a zero nine zero course on that. Leveled off at three three zero, switching to altitude hold. Look how fast this point is gonna go to Mach 8-4 and it's not gonna care.
looked incredible. Step away for a moment, it seems to be settling out. Oh yeah, as far as flying goes, this thing's amazing. I'm, I'm loving it so far. Course is coming in. Once it gets a little closer, we'll switch it over to VOR low mode. following the VOR course. Let's take a look outside and see what we can see. So that's I-94 in Michigan. That'll be Benton Harbor. So we're pretty much just going to follow I-94 here. That should be Kalamazoo. Have some woodlands and then Battle Creek will be right there. Next checklist isn't until the descent. Actually, we can do this too. Automatically making a PA announcement about being able to take your seatbelt off. That's dope. Not sure I brought enough fuel to fly this fast. I don't think I did. <laughs> it probably calculated based on an actual cost index, you know? Oh no, calculated Mach 8.5. Perfect. It's exactly, well, we're actually going a little slower than that. What else do you get it calculate for? Because it doesn't even look like I can go to 8.5 at this altitude. 330, that's what I thought. Yeah, I don't think it's really going to do that at this altitude. Hauling ass. A little bit of a crosswind up here. Wind's out of the north. Yep, there's Kalamazoo. Alright, so... Let's see here. We've got about 30 miles until our next fix, which would be Koinu. And then 72 miles to get to the Carlton VOR, which puts us set up pretty much right on the finals to land in Detroit, actually. Um, so we got 100 miles to go. We are hauling ground or true air speeds. 486. I believe this will tell you your ground speed. Yeah, tracking ground speed. Ground speed 509. I can just use the DME there if that's actually really nice. That's dope. So, let's see. We're at 330. Let's Pull up some uh, approaches for Detroit, see if one actually starts down near Carlton. We'll need one along runways. Oh, they're all along. Four left or three right is probably what we're going to do.
We'll do four left, because realistically that's what we'd be doing coming from this direction. It doesn't look like it comes off of the VOR itself, but we'll just vector ourselves there. So I less four left. We'll hold off on digging around with the frequency, because that's how we're navigating right now. But we're going to want to be down around about... 4,000 feet, it looks like. So we need to go... We need to lose 29,000 feet, so you want to start doing that at least. We'll make the math easy. We'll say 90 miles out. And I said that that one's 72. That one's 123. So 90 miles out is actually 72 plus 20. Or sorry, that'd be 20 there. It's 20 miles from Konu, which we're actually inside a little bit. So that doesn't seem right. Yeah, it is, though. That, that math's right. So let's spin her in. I'll actually wait until we've transitioned over, and we'll see how that goes. Looks like that might be other traffic out there. Yeah, it's other traffic or something. Which is interesting because I'm not connected to that sim or anything. Or it's just a goofy cloud. No, that looks like it's trying to say there's other traffic out there. Once these cross over, we're going to switch over to using the number two, and then I'll move that same information over the number one side. We'll be able to switch back to number one. And that should happen at this saying 72 miles, and this should say about 130. There's 72 and about 130. That's pretty much right on. Switching over. It's going to be a slight turn to follow this different radial over here now. Now I'm going to transfer that over as well. 15.7 on a 093 course. That was a bit excessive playing. Just made everyone in the back go, oh, oh. Anyway. Um, and we need to start down to 4,000 feet, I believe. Yes, we do. So, 4,000 altitude select. We're going to go to manual real quick. And push the nose down to start that rate of ascent. 510, it's going to be uh, 2,500 feet per minute is what we need. We'll do a little more than that. There we go. Looking good. I was able to bring the power all the way back to idle. There's efficiency for you. You just keep blasting, blasting, blasting. Pfft, power back to idle. Practically glide in. Notice how much quieter it is now. Ooh, 
that should be not open. <laughs> All right, let's get this ready for the ILS we're going to be doing. It's going to be 111.95, course of 036. Hey, we got a uh, prime sub from Pears for Bears. What's up, man? We're just descending into Detroit right now in a uh, very old school 747 that I struggled to learn this morning, which is why I haven't been on Diablo yet. Check this shit out, man. So you got like a normal panel, right? Except for there's no real screens. Overhead gets crazier, though. Look at this shit. This shit doesn't even exist in the planes anymore. It's an engineer panel. It's kind of cool, though. Flying it, not gonna lie. I like it. It's interesting. I'm also known to be moderately crazy, so there's that. This thing is hauling ass. Hi, yeah, you wanna go back to speed mode? That'd be great. Oh, yeah, it's crazy, but I. The funny thing is, if you were to go back and watch this VOD, you'd see me figuring it all out. Because this makes sense to me after I fiddled, well, not all of it, there's a few things I need to learn. But it all kind of makes sense because it's, you're basically manually doing what all the systems do automatically for you now. So as long as you understand them, you're like, oh, okay, well, it's doing this. I mean, it took me forever to get through all the damn buttons, but goddamn. Um, let's see. I've got that set for the approach, so that's fine. Put a DH in there. It's in hundreds of feet, so that's... 200 feet set. Did that mimic me? It did. Sweet. That's nice. I only have to set it once because I have that turned on. Um... What else? So that's set, that's set. Well, let's have it run us through the checklist. Seat belts and no smoking signs. On. Handy eyes. Off. Exterior lights. Check. Out of brakes. Hold on. Low. Radio INS switches. Radio. Flight director computer selectors. Check. Brake pressure. Check. Spoilers. Hold on. <clears throat> Sorry for breaking the immersion again. Apparently, I'll have to find the custom command for that. It's the keyboard command. There it is. Altimeters. One, zero, one, three, set and cross check. Yeah, I need to actually Landing set that. Landing data, EPR, and airspeed bugs. Set and cross check. Speed belts. No, they're not. The check. Fuel panel. Check. Let's see. Off. EPR computer. Let's see. Oh, that's descent and approach? Yeah, no, I'm not going to go around yet. We're at cruise, bro. We'll just say that's fine. Cabin altitude. Check. Circuit breaker. Check. Approach checklist completed. Sweet baby Jesus, we are way too high still, and we're hauling ass.
Yeah, we're just gonna do this for a moment. So the airport's like right over there. We're gonna have to circle around because this thing takes a while to slow down apparently and get down. Although I think, you know what, my initial calcu my initial uh, calculation on where I was supposed to be as far as um, starting my descent might have been right. So that could be part of it. Let's see, flaps one at 275, flaps five at 250. That is nuts. So I could go flaps one right now, but before we do that, let's do this. Performance calculation for landing. Yep, yep, it's close enough, close enough. Thirty thirteen is our current meter here. Does this not give me a ref speed? Landing, that's what I want. Oh wow, so I can use minimum and it would be fine. Eh, we'll use mid just in case I take forever to touch down. That's a good call. Set speed bugs. Ref will be 147. Okay, cool. So the speed bugs are set. So the bottom one's ref. Okay. Fair enough. So that's Ypsilanti. Our airport's right here. We just can't see it at the moment from this point of view. It's right there. So yeah, we're clearly not in position to land right now, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna do a turn to heading a 180. It's gonna give us more time to get down. And let's go uh, under 250. We can go to flaps ten five. Flaps five. That'll help us slow down. Flaps five, we can go down to, we'll do 210 as our lowest speed. Ten thousand. Through ten. Extra lights on. Set the uh, ILS over here as well. What's our limit for 20? 237 it looks like. Let's go flaps 20. Flaps 10. Oh, that's 10. Oops, did I screw that up? No, I didn't. That's good. Let's 
Oh, down at this speed, I can actually get like everything out, it looks like. From 90, we can go 20. Flaps 20. All right, we should be good to turn around. What altitude are we at now? Full key set ready? Nice. We're only about five, ten minutes from touching down here, so if you wanted to hang out and watch that, it won't be long. I can go full flaps now, can I? Yeah, I can. Let's go gear down. Gear down. Flaps 30. Flaps 30. Down to level on. Glide to level on. Gears down. Green light. Turn a little more directly in towards the airport here. Let's expedite this because we're pretty much ready to go. Let's do landing checklist. Landing checklist. Gear. Down and check. Down and check. Flaps. Flaps 30. Flaps 30. Ignition. Flight start. And I skip. Check. Altimeters. One, zero, two, zero. Set and cross check. Landing checklist completed. Sweet. Is there a gear thing over here where you could see all the damn different gears to make sure they roll down? Yeah, it's right here. I'm not messing with that right now, though. I just had two engines fail. What the shit? But ah, that's great. It's wonderful. It's a successful first flight, having two engines now. You should predict crash. Engine stabilized. All the engines came back, but they hot started to shit. Oh gosh, the auto throttle's very upset. Hold on. Engine stabilized. Okay, the engines are back. We're fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Is it manageable with two out? I probably was going to have to land at a much uh, reduced flap setting. About to level out at 4,000. And actually where we are, we need to go down to 3,000.
Disaster averted. It is a fuel issue. I'm gonna have to see how much fuel Simbrief ends up saying we are supposed to land with, because we end up if we end up landing at it, I'm gonna be very confused. Alright, let's slow it back to 170. Let's go flaps 30 again. Flaps 30. Everything was on fire for a moment there. Frickin' had two engines frickin' flame out because they ran out of fuel because of goofiness with how that system works, I guess. I don't know. Runway's out that way. Localizer should start coming in here. That's the right identifier. Not that runway, but that runway is the one we're going to. Unless I screwed it up. Should be what we're going to. Yeah, four left. Okay, yeah, that's right. We're good. That's not a runway. That's uh, I-275, so we do not want to go there. Flight slips alive. And our ref speed once we intercept is going to be 147. I have no idea when to pull the power all the way to idle on this thing for landing. It's just going to be a pure guess. Flight captured. Oh, fucking spoilers have been out this whole time, too. All the way. Jesus Christ. It is amazing we didn't crash. And the reason that happened is because this isn't working the way it should right now. See? Nothing. I said it speed breaks. Apparently that's not the one it wants me to use. Let's go auto throttle off. And this thing has so much power, you hardly need any throttle out of it, apparently, to hold that 147 knots. probably should have read when you're supposed to start the flare and start pulling the power back. So, um, we'll see how this goes. 1,000. Stable spoil stowed. 
Furbus approach altitude set. Yep, yeah, 3,000 is good enough. It's fine. Autopilot off. This will be fun with my trim not working properly. Landing. Oh boy, we're a little high. Oh, there's no callouts. 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh boy. Oh no, it bounced! <laughs> Land, you whore! Oh shit! I don't know if my press reversers are working either! Hey, there they go! Oh my gosh! Out, off, reverse. 60 knots. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a fun replay to watch back! First attempt landing the 747. Holy crap. I think everyone in the back just shit themselves. Flaps up. Wait, did that actually turn on? Yes. Oh man. That was terrifying. Ooh, this thing really wants to go. Oh, I made a mistake. I did not need to go around that way. Good lord. That's okay. Got a whole lot of breakaway thrust here. I made my life so much harder going that way. You know, because this thing's kind of big. Not sure if you noticed that. Everyone on board just shat their pants again. rid of a few engines here, shall we? Let's get rid of number one. We'll, we'll start, we'll, we'll go down to three engines. We'll see how it taxis on three, because on four it's pretty rough. Really wants to just go.
That's more like it. I'm about to just taxi straight across everything to just get back to the terminal because this stream's taking quite a bit longer than I thought it would. I'm really hungry. I need sustenance. Is there an after landing checklist I should have done? Yep. After landing checklist. Ah! Brake pressure. Check. Body gear steering. Arm. Out of brakes. Off. Ignition. Mm. Off. Engine ah! and brake and the ice. <laughs> Almost went off, off the taxiway there. Radar and transponder. Stand by. Flaps. Up. Spoilers. Down. Stabilize the trim. Mm. Yeah, I think I was uh, out of CG. I think that might have been cause of some of my issues on takeoff and landing there. Seven units is what it's supposed to be set to? Okay. Seven units. Outflow valve. Open. Presentation mode selector. Let's see. Yeah, we'll get to you in a minute there, dude. A little busy taxing around. All right, after the very long taxi in, the promised replay of the landing will be coming shortly. Let's go park over in Delta Land. Oh, I, I could have went to where Lufthansa parks. Lufthansa. That was just because I used a lot of power to get it moving faster. It was angry. Trying to save some time, taxing a bit faster than I should, and by a bit I mean a lot faster. <laughs> We gotta go to the center atrium spot. It's the uh, signature big plane parking area. Easy, slow it down a bit. Okay. We're gonna park Velza. Oh, I'm blinding them. My bad. My strobe salon? Yeah, they are. Total noob. Noob move. Oh, wow. I actually lined up pretty good. Bring it in. That, uh... 
baggage belt would be getting blown away right now. No, that's good. All right. Parking brake set. Parking brake set. All right. Pressurization mode selector manual. Uh, here's my pressurization. Manual. Off cargo heat. Let's see. Off. APU. Check. Checklist completed. And shut down. All right. Secure cockpit checklist. Brakes. Parked. Oh, that's Beacon not a light. shutdown checklist, so I need to actually do things. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so AP generator, close that. Close that. Close, close. So we're on AP ground power and... Shut DOS engines down, beacon off. Here comes the jet bridge. Beacon lights off. INS. Hmm. A light. Probe and window heat. Damn. Damn. Check valves. Check. Fuel boost pumps. Ah, uh, this. Off. Reserve tank valves. Ah, uh, this. Closed. Hydraulic panel. Wait. Check. Oxygen. Check. Flight recorder. Off. Emergency lights. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Off. Radar. Damn. Stand by and Off. Off. INS. Let's see. INS off. I'm not turning that all the way off. We'll just check it. Radio switches. Ah, uh, this. Check we just turn it. Cool. There you go. There's the completion of that flight. Let's do our review with a replay. I do not want flaps one. Thank you very much. Flaps up. Let's go to replay mode. Let's get my face out of the way. We'll watch that landing again, and then we'll find someone to raid, and we'll get out of here. So, uh, yeah, let's get this replay heading back. All right, we'll go from right there. Enjoy your re replace. Here comes the pain. Oh my gosh, look how nose down I was. Ooh, I porpoise. That was a nose wheel touched first. Oh my gosh, that could have been a crash. That could have been a straight up crash. That, um...
That, that's real bad. <laughs> that's... Yeah, I don't even understand, because it, it didn't want to touch down, even though it was, like, nose low. Maybe I had the wrong flap setting for my weight? If I had a lower flap setting, I would have had to bring the nose up more. On the nose, flying the nose, literally right here. And then the mains touch down. It's kind of horrifying, actually. <laughs> Look how long it was on the nose, you could tell. Runway one. Shift three, that's right. You'll see the spoilers come up once it finally touches down. Spoilers are up. That was terrible. All right, well, I need to practice landing in this thing. I mean, I need to practice everything. It was the first time flying it. But um, overall, my thoughts are what an incredible plane. Uh, the Felis team did an amazing job. They took a plane that's extraordinarily complex and they made it very accessible. Um, and the checklist usage is awesome. Their guides, I was reading through the manuals, they're pretty good too. Um, highly recommend you check this out. It is a wonderful plane. Um, once again, I'd like to thank uh, XP Aviator for gifting this plane to me. Uh, I won a drawing and it was totally just from him. So I wanna thank him for that. Um, I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to flying in this plane more. Um, so, in the meantime, let's find someone to raid. Um, oh wow, Katie Pilot's on. I haven't seen her on in forever. Well, she's not a small, uh, streamer by any means, but let's give her a raid, so. We'll give Miss Katie Pilot a raid. Uh, thank you all for stopping by. Thank you, Paris for Bears, for the Prime sub. Thank you, King Rydog, for your 12 months of Tier 3 subs. Absolutely bonkers. Um... Yeah, we'll see you next time. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe later today. Who knows? I'll let you know. Have a good one. See ya.